All right, so we're going to be looking at Nextcloud. Um, it's basically a software for file management, uh, documents, um, really like a well-rounded productivity tool for any business, organization, or school, student, university. Um, so I'm going to just jump into like a demo of it. Um, so this is an installation of, uh, of Nextcloud that we did um, on our servers um, that we'll show you how to do in a second, but I just wanted to see what you're kind of in for, which is like kind of incredible. So I'm gonna log in. Um, you can have like all your like user management and everything set up. So um, just like looking here, it's a list of documents um, and, and it acts as a file storage. So what you can also do is create new documents. So you can create like, diagrams like text documents like word documents spreadsheets presentations mind maps um, there's a bunch of other ones as well there's lots of different kind of applications you can also add to this um, so like just as an example i'm gonna create i'll create a new like diagram i think i have one here so i can just open this one um, and i'll set it as a flow chart like so what i can do is i can actually edit this like within the browser um, and then share this in real time with some of my other team members, which makes it super, super collaborative um, and really nice. So I'm just going to exit this. Um, and then so files, uh, documents, um, it has like all these other kind of applications. So photos is really cool. Like if you're a photographer, you can kind of store a lot of your photos in here um, and then get some of the, um, the metadata that you wouldn't always be able to get. Um, and save those here. So it acts as another like kind of storage for photographers um, or even videos. Um, talk is really cool. It's essentially web conferencing. So if you have a team like within your uh, business or organization, you can um, have meetings with them here as well uh, with video, with audio, with like the full like screen share, everything. Um, you can take notes um, on the productivity side, like project management side. Um, this is similar to, to like Trello where you can um, create different boards and tasks and cards um, and kind of move them around like on a Kanban type of uh, view um, and then like assign them to different people and like have like a full project management um, flow working here. Um, one of the other uh, apps that I installed was um, tasks. So like I can create a new task, like, I don't know, do something. Uh, like I can share with other people and like just keep going. It, it basically it's a really good um, uh, productivity tool again, and and there's so many other kind of applications that are built for this. Um, I just have like essentially the standard ones that come with it installed, um, but like there's all these different categories. So like I don't know multimedia. There's like tons of different options. Like there's just so many uh, different things that you can include here. And, and again, this is completely free and open source. Um, so the guys that have developed this project have done an excellent job um, getting this done and, and getting this uh, out the door for everyone to use. Um, I can't believe that people don't use this more than like something like Google Drive or, or like Microsoft 365. Um, I think that this is like really, really good. Um, so yeah, so let's just jump into the installation. All right, so we're going to be installing this on a fresh installation of uh, Ubuntu 18.04. Um, and this is the only command you really need to run to get everything installed. Um, but before you get into that, just I want to make sure that you have um, your ports 80 and 443 forwarded. So if you're on a local network like your house or your office, um, just go into your router settings and open those for the IP address that you're installing everything on. Um, and if you're running this on Google Cloud or like Amazon, um, just make sure you have your firewall rules to have these ports open for that virtual machine. Um, so I'm using Google Cloud and, and so I've created those um, firewall rules for those. Um, and then the other thing you're going to want to do is create an A record. So if you have a domain name, um, what you can do is create a new A record and point it to the public IP address of your server. So if it's your house or your office, it'll be the public IP address of your entire office or home. Um, and then in my case, it's the public IP address of um, my Google Cloud virtual machine. And uh, so what I wanted to do is essentially um, uh, create a, uh, a DNS for files.techicast.com and that would be pointed to the public IP address of the virtual machine. So as soon as that's done, um, we can copy this line into um, your SSH terminal of your virtual machine. So I have that up here 
and I just I just ran it so I'm not gonna run it again but I literally just ran this um, and it finished like it didn't take long at all uh, it just has to download all the packages and because I guess it's running on Google Cloud it was, it was like really quick so um, let's see what the next step is so what we're gonna want to do is manually create a username um, this just makes it easier uh, when we're logging in afterwards, you don't have to do this. Um, let me leave that. So, if I go back into the terminal, I'll copy and paste that, and then the first line will be the username. So, I'm going to make it admin, um, and I'll just make it password for now, just because I'm showing everyone. Um, and then I can go into the GUI and, and change it afterwards. So, while that is going, let's see if I'm missing another step here. Um, okay. And then the next step will be to add the domain that you created in your DNS as a trusted domain. So in my case, um, I need to add uh, files.techiecast.com. So I'm just going to copy that line. So the username was added correctly. So I'm going to add files.techiecast.com. So it's important to make sure that you set up your A record prior to doing this. Otherwise, it won't know where to go to look for that um, that a record uh, so hit enter and then it should have been added and now we want to um, allow the ports 80 and 443 on the local ubuntu uh, firewall so make sure that it allows for the traffic on those ports and then we're going to set up an ssl certificate now for our server so I'm going to hit yes, and then I'm going to enter an email address. Um, you can enter anything you want here, but um, if something does go wrong, the, they will email here. So I'm just going to put in our TechieCast email and then make sure you enter your domain correctly here. So files.techiecast.com. Okay, it's going to it's going to start getting the certificates, and I think that should be the last step. Yes. So you can also create um, your own kind of self-assigned uh, certificate, but I find Let's Encrypt is a little bit easier and it, it uses a third-party um, certification, so it's kind of nicer that way. Uh, so yeah, as soon as that's done, we should be able to go to our new domain. So yep, it looks like it's done. I'm going to open up a browser and, um, and just go to files techiecast.com sweet that was like super easy right um, and then we created a username which is admin and the password was password so let's get in there nice sweet so yeah we're basically in we have a fresh installation of nextcloud um, and everything seems to be working perfectly it's it's uh it's secured, the certificate is valid with Let's Encrypt, it's awesome, everything is working, sweet. Alright, that should be good then, thanks.